Generational changes aren't anything new to those familiar with the Monster Hunter franchise. Even between individual games, weapons will change, skills will adjust, and the same sets can play very differently from one installment to the next. I'd like to talk about the formal weapon changes for a moment. There are some weapons out there that from their introduction have gone through a maelstrom of identity changes from game to game. Whether it's from the addition of new mechanics such as the hateful gun Lartik gauge, simple but impactful adjustments like the maimed spirit gauge in 4U, or even through changing the main combo altogether. I'm looking at you to recharge slash. It's safe to assume that no weapon is safe and anything can change with each new entry. However, one weapon in particular I feel has maintained its simplicity since its introduction is the star of Monster Hunter Tri, the Switch Axe. At its core, you have the slow attacking but nimble axe mode which charges up to allow you to use the powerful sword mode. You can maintain a gauge which allows you to switch between both modes at will. As the games went on, I feel as though this core has largely been unchanged, with every adjustment to the weapon only serving to further augment the existing features. More options to switch between each mode, more moves for both axe and sword, and then further options in 5th gen with the ability to amp both sides of the coin. No massive changes in my opinion, and whilst it does play differently throughout each game, the core concept remains very much the same. So why switch axe? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look at a place not too long ago where switch axe was completely different, and a one Wonderful thing at that. I'm Cyrus Symmetry, and this is Switch Axe F. The F, as you might have guessed, stands for Frontier. Switch Axe was introduced in the G10 expansion of Frontier in 2016, years after its mainline debut. Atypically for new weapons in Mesoporta, SAF was not locked behind a quest chain, nor had any prior requirements. You just hit G rank and there it was. As Frontier had access to different hunting styles, much like Monster Hunter Generations, at launch you also had the option of Earth, Heaven and Storm. So we'll start with what we know. Earthstar was the moveset as we know it from main series. Attack in axe mode to build up gauge to unleash sword mode. Movesets were largely unchanged from how one knew the weapon in Tri Ultimate. Seriously, it was pretty much a one to one transfer from the mainline games. Now, the point where it gets real crazy is when we take a look at the other two options. Beginning with Heaven Style, it by and large did away with sword mode. That's right, your main combos will be using Old Faithful, the axe. However, blink and you'll miss it, you do still get access to sword mode for a split second through Fade Slashes. Now Fade Slashes were an evasive attack where you would instantly morph to sword mode and slash while moving left, right or backwards. This attack had a significant amount of iframes and could actually be chained to side hops, meaning that if you delayed your inputs well enough, you could dance around a monster in a flurry of sword and axe slashes all whilst enjoying some sweet invulnerability. I mean, in all honesty, it's hilarious to me that Switch Axe got Fade Slash iframes before Longsword, but there you have it. Now that wasn't all. Switch Axe in Heaven Mode pulled a mechanic from the Tonfers that would soon become a mainstay from the Z expansion going forward. And this was unsheathed sprinting. By double tapping the left stick in the direction that you wanted to go, you'd move at an accelerated pace whilst consuming stamina or with your weapon out. Now most weapons would use this much like sprinting with your weapon away and stamina would go down. However, our mainline migrant here chose another option. You'd slam your axe down and haul ass towards the monster, consuming sword gauge instead of stamina. It was an incredible tool for repositioning and closing gaps, and you could simply outpace some monster attacks through speed alone. In summary, Heaven was a rapid, evasive playstyle that focused on running rings around your enemy. Whilst that may sound appealing on paper, however, the alternative was so much better. Storm style introduced something that has been sorely missed from Switch Axe in my opinion, and that's the ability to guard point. By pressing a shoulder button, your hunter would instantly ready the axe, and could parry any blockable attack with no knockback. Now, that does sound appealing, but the changes didn't stop there. The Elemental Discharge, a Hail Mary attack that would do massive damage if you had the window to get the full combo off, also got an overhaul. You can see here your hunter changes their stance, slashes to the side, and then slams down the axe before overloading the fire with another reload on top, causing a huge explosion. This was worth 375 motion value. Furthermore, blocking with this style allowed you to build up a separate gauge to the usual sword gauge. Once it was full, you would get the option to change into a new mode. Introducing the light sword mode. Years before Bolt Reaver even thought of showing its face, this new sword mode was 10 miles long and hit like a brick to the testes. The combos were largely unchanged, however the range and motion values were vastly improved. Additionally, you'd keep the guard point in light sword mode, allowing you to essentially self-perpetuate the gauge constantly. Storm mode was 100% the way to go when it was the option between that and heaven, however this would last for all of about 6 months. Zenith was about to rear its ridiculous spiked head. 
extreme style Kyoku no Kata took both Storm and Heaven and slammed them together in a sky splitting combination. In short, it combined the two identically, no more, no less. You could blast from guard point to evasion fade slashes with side steps in between. An experienced player could simply dance around, blocking, maintaining gauge without a single hair on their head being harmed, all while crapping out enough damage to turn off the sun. It was utterly, utterly ridiculous and such a powerful boost for Switch Axe to have both options available. Finally, after the summary of the styles, I'd like to just have a mechanical note here. Uh, in main series we're used to elemental, power and unique files, so these files affect all sword mode attacks, with power giving a boost to raw, element to the abnormal effect of the weapon, and unique being things like the dragon file on a cantle weapons or the poison on Nagakuga. Frontier did away with a lot of this. Status files, element files and power files were king. Power did what it said on the tin, added 10% raw to sword mode motions, element added 30% more element, and status added the same value to paralysis, poison or sleep. Now with the latter, a wonderful skill known as abnormality went hand in hand with the status files. Essentially it converted status into raw, allowing you to generate a power file effect whilst also having high amounts of said status. It was a perfect example of weapon and skill synergy that I really really miss in Monster Hunter. It's no surprise that Switch Axe F became one of the top dogs in terms of damage dealt throughout Frontier, essentially having an answer to everything that was thrown at it. If I'm being honest, the closest relative or the closest weapon that plays like this behemoth in main series would be our 5th gen longsword. The ability to evade, counter and seamlessly combo something into the dirt translates very well in this scenario. But I do hope you've enjoyed this breakdown of Switch Axe in Frontier and as always I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Take it easy lads and I'll see you next time.